We're gonna record this because I have no idea whether or not this is working. It's really becoming a problem here. Uh, if it records, great. If it doesn't, I'm gonna go ahead and load it, uh, uh, you know, because the live stream just does not seem to be working and I don't know what the problem is. At any rate, I think we have a very serious issue going on here, friends, so let me just get right into it here. Um, Turkey is claiming that the Kurdish forces uh, have emptied the Islamic State prisons in northeastern Syria. And uh, Turkish Defense Minister uh, Hulusi uh, Akar said on Monday, Syrian Kurdish YPG fighters uh, emptied a jail holding Islamic State prisoners in part of Syria where Ankara is mounting an offensive. Well, I think his name kind of says it all, Halusi, like he was probably hallucinating uh, when he made this statement there uh, because, you know, we have seen too much going on. In fact, uh, uh, of course, this doesn't confirm or deny his claim, Mr. Halusi there, but Iraq detains ISIS militants fleeing the uh, Syrian Defense Force prisons there. Uh, they see them crossing over the borders into Iraq. And, of course, uh, we've got different uh, uh, footages and claims on uh, Twitter. Uh, U.S. Congress and European Union, ISIS taking away ISIS prisoners and their families in trucks from uh, Ain Issa camp in northern Syria, fully armed, using Turkish tanks there. Using Turkish tanks there. And so they're able to identify that that actually is much so so much... Uh, well, let's see what he says. Today, the civilians coming of Ain Issa camp have been secured. Uh, we'll go on to see what else it says here. If we can get this thing to play. Um, and this was soon after the Turkish jets uh, had targeted Kurdish pr uh, prison guards there. He also says here, uh, by the brothers in the 1st Corps Division 11 Brigade 113, Just see if they talk about anything else. It's actually an armored personnel carrier. It's not uh, so much a tank uh, as they're saying on this article here. Maybe there's a tank or something in view there that we're not aware of. Uh, but these are ISIS militants that are being uh, rescued and redeployed. Now, intelligence sources that we have uh, been uh, getting on this, uh, and by the way, this is another one right here. These guys here are swearing to behead any Kurdish fighters that they come across on their way uh, out of out of uh, Syria there. So it says, in the name of God, praise be God, from inside the town of Ras Al Ain, uh, uh, Thawar Al Muwali desist, we've come to behead you, you infidels, you apostates, God willing, we're coming for you. Just a few hours and you'll show you the decapitated heads. Okay, so they're, they're swearing to decapitate Kurdish fighters along their way uh, into, um, uh, as, they, as they are headed out. I say where they're actually headed to, and let me show you here. I'm going to show you some places here on the maps. This is the Syria. Uh, this is by al Bukamal down here on the bottom here. Uh, you have Deir Ezzord right up in this region up here. Uh, the U.S. has their own base right over on this area here. Uh, but I am being told that these ISIS militants are being moved to Qaim, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, Q-A-I-M. Uh, they're also being moved to the Ain Assad Air Base in Iraq, which uh, as we zoom in here, not too, too far from the Syrian border. That's only about a 40 mile drive to the Syrian border to the Ain Assad Air Base where they're being moved there. And they're also being moved to the Kurdistan region here in northern Syria, uh, Mosul, Tal uh, Afar. Not sure as, as far as which cities are being moved to, but this is the information that's been given to us. And I'm gonna read that information to you directly. It says, hi Stephen, according to the intelligence I just received, Americans are heavily involved in the preparation for getting over 2,800 ISIL or ISIS fighters, mostly the escapees from Turkish attack into three different spots in Iraq. Qaim, which is close to the Syrian border by Bukama, uh, Ain al-Assad military base, and a camp in western Kurdistan of Iraq. They are supposed to get organized to start their reinsurgence from these three places. All right, so there you have it right there. Three different places that these ISIS militants are being moved to, and according to intelligence sources there, the United States is heavily involved in this 
As I've showed to you already, it seemed very obvious when Trump moved our troops off the northern border, Turkey was very well organized and prepared to invade. And as our source was telling us, same source is giving us this information here, is that if Turkey didn't do it directly, Israel would target these prison camps in order to free the ISIS militants. They never targeted the prisons themselves that would have killed the ISIS militants, but instead targeted the guard houses in order to free them. But because they're being exposed for what they're doing, this is why we see uh, this article here on Reuters. Turkey says Kurdish forces emptied the Islamic State prisons in northeast Syria. But you know, that doesn't make sense when you've got the ISIS militants in their own video talking about how they're going to behead Kurdish fighters on their way. It says, Turkish-backed armed groups threaten to behead any infidel Kurd they capture on their way to northeast Syria. To all those who are worried that ISIS may come back, ISIS is already back to northeast Syria with Turkish protection. Okay, and not only do we get the Turkish protection, but we see in this video footage here, that indeed they had Turkish protection. Interesting, isn't it? Turkish protection with the help of the United States. You know, we've reported in the times past many times these unmarked uh, Black Hawk helicopters, things like that, moving uh, ISIS families, uh, their, their chief officers, things like that, moving them out of harm's way. Uh, but the fighters are regrouping and they are on their way to another location inside of Iraq. In fact, three locations, as we reported to you again, uh, Qaim, and I'll show you that on a map here, so maybe it shows a little bit better other than using the uh, satellite footage there. We'll back out on the map here so you can see Syria right there on the southern border there. Don't forget, Deir Zort is a place that was recaptured by the Syrian military, and so they got to regroup to go back into here. I was also being told, though, that they've got to topple the president, the current president of Syria, excuse me, Iraq, so that they can regain control of Iraq. And then the other place as well uh, is right there at the uh, Ain Assad Air Base. And again, that, uh, the, uh, the one place, Qaim, right there, Ain Al Assad Air Base, right down here. And all of that, that's 40 miles from the border. This spot here in Qaim, very close, just a few kilometers to the border. And then somewhere in an area close to the Syrian border, when they're talking about moving to northeast Syria, uh, they could be in Duhok, anywhere that is inside the Kurdistan area. So, is it possible that the Kurds may be working with the Americans as well on this? I don't know. I don't think all the Kurds would be involved. But you just never know. Moving into Kurdistan area there in northern uh, Iraq? Huh. Makes you wonder who's really all involved, doesn't it? I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Apologize about the late hour and getting this information out to you. Uh, but do pray. Pray for my wife, my father-in-law as well. Both of them have been very sick. Uh, Yana is battling a whole new issue now. And we will be doing very intense uh, treatments for her over the next three months. We actually have to travel two hours away uh, for her treatment twice a week. Uh, for the next couple of months, and then it'll start tapering off a little bit, uh, but a very serious issue, completely different than what she had before. And, um, and then on top of it, her dad also, uh, very, very serious uh, health condition. He's 78 years old, but we believe that uh, he will also, by God's grace, will come out of what he's battling. Um, you know, he was facing a very serious issue with his kidneys, so just be praying for him as well. That also puts a lot of stress for my wife, uh, we love him very dearly, uh, so please keep both of them in your prayers. As Jana begins to recover a little bit, you know, in between these uh, treatments there, she'll be coming back on with me. She will be doing some writing in the meantime, uh, but, you know, your help and prayers is greatly appreciated, and also your support to the ministry that we do here. Uh, you can do that at IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate online there, and, of course, uh, I think, don't think I have our address up on here at this point, but uh, no, I don't have it on here. But it's in the description on the uh, video itself. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov. Oh, by the way, before I say Erev Tov, don't forget, 
uh, Fact News Network, our YouTube channel over there. I'll put that in the video in the description link uh, as well. And the reason I'll do that uh, is because that particular channel, sometimes I do load, load news footages there that don't even make it here to Israeli News Live. I'm doing just a quick news sometimes. I'm only posting those there on Fact News Network. So uh, check it out. We're going we're gonna to get these things ironed out. And if you also have been watching us over there, uh, I haven't been able to be uh, doing our teaching like I want to. Just there are a lot of things that are going on right here. So anyway, we thank you for your prayers. God bless you and good evening.